with all learning, there are certain attributes that are needed for each task. Whether we are learning to drive, play football, do mathematical calculations, or learning to read. Human beings cannot be good at everything. We all have our strengths and weaknesses for these different tasks. Unfortunately, for the children who struggle to read, they tend to have weaknesses in the two essential attributes that are needed for reading. And by reading here, I mean being able to say what the words are on the page. I'm not talking about comprehension. Now, the first attribute for learning to read, which is also the same for writing, is a good visual memory. The children who have a good memory are able to remember many things easily. Whether it is whole words, letter sounds, numerals, nursery rhymes, a script for a school play, songs, hymns, etc. These children only need to practice a few times and they have learnt them. The second attribute is having good auditory skills. And that means for reading, the children need to be able to hear the word after the sounds have been spoken. For example, when a child says de or g, he or she needs to be able to put the sounds together and hear the word dog. For writing, the auditory skill is different. It is the other way round. For this skill, the children need to be taught to hear and identify the sounds in words in the correct order from the beginning to the end of the words. So when a child wants to write the word dog, he or she needs to hear the sounds d o g. Now, some children find these auditory skills extremely easy and others find them much more difficult, but they can all be taught. It just needs more practice for some children. So if, if the group of children with good visual memories also have a naturally good auditory ability to hear the sounds in words, they are often able to crack the alphabetic code for themselves. For example, a child might have seen the words mum or mum and have noticed that the letters M have a M sound. And then he or she might notice that the words make and man also have a m sound and they start with that letter m. Then they might see that dad has a d at the beginning and a d at the end. And dog and dig also have that d sound at the beginning. And then maybe that ant, and and ad all start with this a sound. And then they see that a sound in the middle of dad and sort of dad and they can kind of put it together. And gradually the children make the connection between all the single alphabet letters and their associated sounds and work out simple words like these for themselves. So big hop egg, simple little words. Later on this extends to noticing that a word like church has a ch sound at each end and that the two letters C and H are used for that sound. And then seeing words like chips and rich confirms their understanding that sometimes these two letters are used for the ch sound. Bit by bit, using whole word memory and code cracking skills, these children are able to teach themselves to read. They are the children who do well, even with a whole word method of teaching. They do even better and go much faster with synthetic phonics because they are not taking the time that would be needed to deduce the code for themselves. Now at the other end of the spectrum, there are children who have a poor visual memory. For them, it is terribly difficult to memorize words, poems, songs, etc. Even with synthetic phonics teaching, these children struggle to remember the letter sounds, which is a much easier task than memorising whole words. Adults who can read English easily rarely understand how hard this task is until the script is changed and they are asked to memorise words in a different script. And for this demonstration, I've chosen to use Korean words. 
I could easily have chosen other scripts that are based on the sounds of the language, such as Russian or Arabic. Let's look at these Korean words. Now, try downloading these words and learning them. Most people find it extremely difficult. So you just download it, fold it over, and then you can kind of test yourself. Moon, moon. Is this one the? Oh, oh no, dog. Is this one the? Yes, yes, that one's the. And is this book? Oh, oh no. <laughs> just imagine how it feels to a child when they are asked to remember these words and they cannot do it. Often the teacher holds up words on flashcards for them to read. And this is when the group of strugglers switch off and leave the calling out to the good memory children. Just imagine, here we are. Now children, this is school. What is it? School. And this is book, book. And we did this yesterday. That's right, girl, girl, and sleep, sleep. <laughs> Memorising squiggles is not easy, especially if you have a poor memory. We need to remind ourselves that our English alphabet letters are just squiggles to young children. Yet when the sounds linked to the squiggles are known, then it is relatively easy to work words out in any languages that are based on a code linked to the sounds of the language such as Korean used in these examples. Very often the children with a poor memory are also the same children who have a poor auditory ability. Now, if these children cannot hear the sounds in words naturally and nobody teaches them to hear the sounds, then it is impossible for them to crack the alphabetic code by themselves. Therefore, it is essential that these children are taught to hear the sounds in words and shown how the letters are linked to the sounds. This is the only way forward for them. Their poor memory adds to their problems. You can imagine that it must be much harder for a child if he or she is struggling to identify some of the letter sounds. Maybe if they were trying to read a word like this, they would go, oh, eh, oh, um, Oh, what's that? oh, yes, that's g. And by then they have forgotten the beginning of the word. You can often see these children struggling. That is why it is so important for them to learn the letter sounds so well that the responses are fluent and automatic.